Hello everyone, thank you very much for signing in and watching my stream. Oh, sorry, I'm really teeny here. Let me fix that. Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Matt and this is Dr. Tot. And welcome to SAT ACT Prep. And this is the third stream, three of three, um, on the rules of exponents. So we've been talking a lot about that this week. Um, this stream will conclude that. Uh, watch out for the posting, the posts that I'm going to make, um, the videos that I'm going to post on the guided lecture, independent practice problems and learning partner activities, both for this set and next week's set. We're going to talk about solving conceptually and solving using uh, substitution. So that'll be next week. Um, and so let me share my screen back where it was before. So we've been going through the rules of exponents. I'm going to list them out one more time just before we get into some more work. As I list them, try to repeat them yourselves. Um, make sure that you remember them. So remember we have six rules, all relating to when we have common bases and we're doing some certain um, operation to those bases raised to exponents. Remember that we always need to have common bases to use any of these rules. The first rule has to do with multiplication. When we have common bases raised to exponents and we're multiplying those values, such as a to the m power times a to the n power, where a represents the same number and m and n represent different numbers. They could be the same, but they're probably different as the notation says or indicates. Um, when we multiply common bases raised to exponents, we can keep the base, add the exponents. So this is equal to a to the m, excuse me, a raised to the m plus n power. So for example, if we had 3 to the fifth times 3 to the third, that's the same thing as 3 to the 5 plus 3 power which is the same thing as 3 to the 8th. Now when we multiply, we're able to add, excuse me, when we multiply, let me make that a little smaller, we're able to keep the base and add the exponent, so when we divide, we can subtract. So this is the rule with division. When we have common bases raised to exponents and we divide those values, we can keep the base and subtract the exponents, making sure to take the numerator's exponent first, subtracting the denominator's exponent from the numerators. The order really matters there. So if we have something like 3 to the 5th divided by 3 squared, that's the same thing as 3 to the 5 minus 2 power, which would be 3 to the 3rd. And you could further simplify that or evaluate it as 27, but we're going to just leave it there for now. Third rule is power of a power. So if we have a number raised to an exponent and we raise that whole quantity, quantity is a word in mathematics we use to um, express a whole value inside of parentheses altogether. So a to the m power quantity raised to the n power, we can keep the base and uh, excuse me, multiply the exponents. So 3 to the third quantity squared would be the same thing as 3 to the 3 times 2 power, which is 3 to the 6th. Then we have a rule for negative exponents. Any number to a negative exponent is equal to 1 over that number raised to its positive equivalent. So a to the negative m power is equal to 1 over a to the positive m power. 
So for example, if we have 3 to the negative 2 power, that we put it all over 1 and just turn the exponent positive. So that would evaluate into 1 9. If you have any questions at any point, just let me know. Fifth rule has to do with fractional exponents. And so if we have a number raised to a fraction, like a to the m over n power, the denominator becomes the index value of the radical. The radicant is the value raised to the numerator's power. So a to the m divided by n power is equal to the nth root of a to the m power. How this usually comes up is where something has, is raised to a fractional power with a numerator of 1. So raising 4 to the 1 half power, notice, equivocates to the same thing, or is, er, equivocates, is the same thing, excuse me, is the same thing as um, the square root of 4 to the first power. And anything to the first power is itself. Um, that's just a governing rule, so anything to the power of 1 is that same something. So this is the same thing as the square root of 4, which would evaluate into positive 2. If you were taking the square root of both sides solving an equation, you would have to take the negative and positive result, but we'll get more into that, uh, more on that later. If there's any questions, again, just let me know. We're going to get into some problems here in just a second. I just want to make sure everybody is... Um, fully afoot on all of the rules. Last rule is called dropping the bases. And this we use to solve um, equations that have variables as exponents. So if some number raised to an exponent is equal to an, that same number equal, uh, raised to some other exponent, we can drop the bases. So if a to the m power is equal to a to the n, then m must be equal to n. So you can drop the bases and equate the exponents. So um, for example, if we know that if we had 3 to the x power is equal to 3 to the fourth power, we can drop the bases of 3 and equate x to 4. So x would be equal to 4 here. OK, if you have any questions at all, please let me know. You can either respond in the live chat function or you can drop a comment below. Um, otherwise, let's take a look at some examples. I'm going to give you 10 minutes. I'd like you to complete these six problems. Now, if you're watching this recording and this is a little bit daunting, you can go back to sessions one and two, where th this is obviously a progression. So I'm starting off with. Um, right away with all these problems because we've already had um, two live streams. Okay, so if you're watching this recording, feel free to jump back to um, session one or session two before watching this one. But otherwise, let's do 10 minutes and then I'll give you some hints. I'll give you five additional minutes and then we'll review them. And I'll keep track of the time here below. I'll update it periodically.
Okay, so let me give you some hints. And I know I said five minutes before, but actually I'm going to give you two minutes just for um, time's sake, just to make sure we get to some other problems. But let me get to, uh, give you some hints uh, before I give you those two minutes. Um, number one, what is the value of 32 to the one-fifth power? So if we convert that into a radical or a radical expression, then that would be the fifth root of 32 to the first power, which is just the fifth root of 32. So what that's asking you is what number raised to the fifth power is 32. Or in other words, what number times itself five times is 32? That would be the answer to this problem. So that's my hint for number one. Number two, we have these bases of 64 and 32, so we don't have common bases as they're written, and we can't use any of the rules of exponents until we do have common bases. Um, 64 is a little tricky because 64 is, is an exponentiation of both 4 and 3, uh, excuse me, 4 and 2, and that, that does happen um, because 4 is a square of 2, so they're going to share um, half as many uh, exponentiations with each other. Um, so 4 and 2 works to be rewritten. You can rewrite 64 in terms of both 4 and 2, but you can't rewrite 32 in terms of a base of 4. You can only do that with 2. So I would point out to you that 2 to the first power is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the third power is 8, 2 to the fourth power is 32, so you can substitute out 32 for the 2 to the fourth power, and 64, excuse me, let me write it in the same order. 2 to the 5th power is 64. Just multiplying by 2 each time. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. 2 to the 4th power is 16. How could I miss that? 2 to the 4th power is 16. 2 to the 5th power is 32. And 2 to the 6th power is 64. My apologies. I skipped over one. So you can substitute out 32 for 2 to the 5th power, and you can substitute out 64 for 2 to the 6th power. Then you're going to have a power of a power. Just make sure that you multiply, excuse me, you distribute the, uh, those exponents to the values in the parentheses, that 3x plus 1 and the 6x minus 1. Okay, so rewrite your, common, your bases in terms of a common base, multiply to get rid of the power of a power, then drop the bases to uh, equate the exponents and solve for x. For 3, recognize we don't have common bases, but recognize that 11 to the first power is 11, 11 squared is 121. So you can rewrite 121 in terms of 11. That's just 11 squared. For 4, they're asking what is the value of 27 squared times 9 to the negative 2 power? Don't be concerned too much about that negative exponent right now. You can just deal with that with the addition, how you deal with multiplication. Um, you're just going to be adding by a negative number instead of adding by a positive, but that's okay. Um, but first get the bases common. So notice that 3 to the first power, you can look at your answer selections too, and that's usually a hint. You see that your answer selections are in terms of a base of 3. So that is a good clue that you have to rewrite in terms of a base of 3. So 3 to the first power is 3, 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27. So you can rewrite those values, then you have a power of a power, and then you can add once you have common bases. Number five, what's the value of 49 cubed divided by 7 to the fifth power? Recognize that 7 to the first power is 7. 7 squared is 49, so you can rewrite and solve that way. Number six, if 81 to the 3x 15 power uh, is equal to two, uh, 243 to the 2x minus 12 power, what is the value of x? Uh, I'm going to change this. I, I'm, I'm hoping that this I'm going to put a, a plus sign in there. Um, 17. Yeah, because I think that this needs to be addition. If that's subtract, if th this would imply right here multiplication. So I'm sorry, I'm going to change this just to be clear, make this a little bit more straightforward. So this is 3x plus 15. So if that's the case, then recognize that 3 to the first power is 3, 
3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27, 3 to the 4th power would be 81, 3 to the 5th power is 243. So you can rewrite and then solve that way. Number 7, what's the value of 16 squared times 4 to the negative 2? So 2 to the 1st is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the 3rd is 8, 2 to the 4th is 16. Um, so notice that works for 2, but then looking at your answer selections, you have a base of 4. So actually we might want to exponentiate in terms of 4, which you can do for 4 and 16. So instead of 2, let's look at 4. 4 to the first power is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So you can sub out and then solve there. Um, for 8, what is the value of 243 to the 1 fifth power? So this is asking what is the fifth root of 243 to the first power, which is just the fifth root of 243. In other words, what number times itself is 243. Okay, if there's any questions, then please let me know. Because I changed number six, I'm actually going to give you a little bit more time, so I'll go back and I will, I'm going to give you five more minutes, um, and then I'll give you all the answers here.
Okay, so let's go through these. Number one, what is the fifth root of 32, or what is 32 raised to the one-fifth power? So if you have a TI-83 or a, a graphing calculator, if you put in 32 and then you hit the caret sign, which looks like a down, like an upward arrow, um, like an arrowhead, um, and then parentheses 1 divided by 5, that is the same thing as taking the fifth root of 32. Thir uh, 2 raised to the fifth power is 32, so the fifth root of 32 is 2. The answer to number 1 is going to be 2. A little fruit fly in here, sorry. Um, number 2, if there's any questions about that, please let me know. Number two, we can rewrite 64 as 2 to the 6th power. So we can say 2 to the 6th power quantity raised to the 3x plus 1 is equal to, and then instead of 32, I can write that as 2 to the 5th power quantity still raised to the 6x minus 1. So then we need to make sure that we distribute. So this 6 has to go to the 3x and to the 1. This 5 has to go to the 6x and to the negative 2. So we're going to have 2 raised to the 18x plus 6 power is equal to 2 to the 30x minus 5 power. Now we have common bases raised to exponents on opposite sides of an equal sign. So we can drop the base and equate the exponents. So this is going to turn into 18x plus 6 is equal to 30x minus 5. If I add 5 to both sides, then I'm going to have 18x plus 11 is equal to 30x. If I subtract away 18x on both sides, then I'm going to get 11 is equal to 12x, dividing by, x, excuse me, dividing by 12 to solve for x. x is equal to 11 twelfths. If you have any questions on that, then please let me know. For number three, if we replace 121 with 11 squared, then we'd have 11 squared quantity raised to the third power divided by 11 to the fourth power. Then we have a power of a power, so we can multiply the two and the three. So we get 11 to the 6th power divided by 11 to the 4th power. When we have common bases raised to exponents and we divide those values, we can keep the base, which is 11, subtract the exponents. 6 minus 4 is 2, so our answer here is going to be 11 squared, or 11 to the 2nd power. For number 4, What's the value of 27 squared times 9 to the negative 2 power? So we can, we can rewrite 27 as 3 cubed, and then that's still squared, times, and instead of 9, I'm going to write 3 squared, and that's still raised to the negative 2 power. So now we can take a power of a power. 3 times 2 is 6, so this is going to turn into 3 to the 6th power. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, so this is going to turn into uh, 3 to the negative 4th power. Now when we have common bases raised to exponents and we multiply, we can add the exponents. Notice though that the effect here, adding a negative, is really the same thing as subtraction. Um, it's just a different way of thinking of subtraction. So this is the same thing as 6 minus 4, so this would evaluate into 2 squared, which is answer selection B. Five, what's the value of 49 cubed divided by 7 to the fifth? So we recognize that we could rewrite 49 in a base of 7 by saying that 7 squared is equal to 49. So instead of 49, I'm going to write, let's get my pen here, 7 squared. That's still quantity raised to the third power divided by 7 to the fifth power. On the left side of this expression, I have 7 squared quantity raised to the third power, so I have a power over power I can multiply. So that's going to be 7 to the 6th divided by 7 to the 5th. Now I have common bases raised to exponents, and I'm dividing, so I can keep the base, which is 7, subtract the exponents, so my answer is going to be 7 
to the 6 minus 5 power or 7 to the first power, which we know is the same thing as just 7. Normally we wouldn't write the exponent out if the exponent is 1. Number 6. So if we have 81 to the 3x plus 15 power is equal to 243 to the 4x minus 12 power, and we're solving for x, I'm going to re uh, replace 81 with 3 to the 4th. So 3 to the 4th power, quantity raised to the 3x plus 15 power, is equal to, instead of writing 243, I'm going to write 3 to the 5th and that's quantity raised to the 4x minus 12 power. Now I have powers of powers on both sides here. I just need to make sure I distribute to both values outside of the parentheses. So this is going to turn into 3 raised to the 12x plus 60th power. 4 times 15 is 60 is equal to 3 raised to the 5 times 4x is 20x 5 times negative 12 is going to be a negative 60. I need an x in there. So now I have common bases on opposite sides of an equal sign, so I can drop the bases and equate the exponents. So 12x plus 60 is equal to 20x minus 60. If I subtract 12x on both sides, then I get 60 is equal to 8x. If I add x, assuming if I add 60 on both sides, then I'm going to get 120 is equal to 8x. And then I'm going to divide by 8 on both sides. So x is equal to 120 over 8. That would reduce to 60 over 4, which is 15. So the answer to number 6 was 15. Number 7, so if we replace 16 squared with 4 squared, excuse me, six, we, sorry, if we replace 16 with 4 squared, so we'd have 4 squared instead of 16, but then that's still raised to the second power times oops, 4 to the negative 2 power. 2 times 2 is 4, so this is going to be 4 to the 4th times 4 to the negative 2. Now we have common bases and we're multiplying, so we can add the exponents. So this is going to be 4 to the 4 plus negative 2, which is the same thing as 4 minus 2. So this is going to simplify into 4 squared, which is answer selection B. And lastly, we have number 8. What is the value of 243 to the 1 fifth power? We said that that's the same thing as the fifth root of 243, which is asking you what number times itself five times is 243. And we can see down here, this actually had to do with another problem. Oh, let me do a, another color. Uh, I already did red. Let me do this bright green. So right here, Notice that we've already um, established that this is uh, 3 to the 5th is 243. So the answer to number 8 is 3. 3 to the 5th power is 243, so the 5th root of 243 is 3. Um, a little divisibility rules. This has nothing directly to do with this, but if you, um, you could see that 243 is divisible by 3 by... Um, the rules for divisibility of 3 and 9. So, um, and these are just generally helpful throughout SAT problems. So, right now is a good enough time to go through uh, them briefly. Notice that um, 2, any even number you know is divisible by 2. Any number that ends in 0 or 5 you know is divisible by 5. Any number that ends in 0 is divisible by 10. And then there's also two divisibility rules for 3 and 9, which are very helpful. If you take any number and you sum up the digits of that number, if that sum is divisible by 3 or 9, then that number itself is divisible by 3 or 9, respectively. So, for example, if you take 243 
let me just do this right here. If you t think about 243, if you were to sum up the digits, that would be 2 plus 4 plus 3. 2, uh, 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3 and 9, because it is 9. So this divisibility rule tells me that 243 is divisible by both 3 and 9, because the sum of its digits is divisible by 3 or 9. So that's a handy trick um, that, that can be very useful, especially on the SAT. If you have any questions, let me know. All even numbers are divisible by 2. All numbers ending in 0 and or 5 are divisible by 5. All numbers ending in 0 are divisible by 10 and all numbers whose sum is divisible by 3 or 9 is also divisible by 3 or 9 itself. Okay, if you have any questions, then please let me know. Otherwise, let's take a look at some more um, application questions. I'm going to give you three minutes. Please look at this question. And I would like you not to use your calculator for this question, by the way. I want you to try and solve it using the rules of exponents. Okay, so let's look at this problem. If a is equal to 4, then a to the third power plus 2 to the a power quantity divided by a squared is equal to what value? 
So let's go ahead and substitute 4 in for a. So we'd have 4 to the third power plus 2 to the fourth power, quantity divided by 4 squared. And we can go ahead and evaluate. 4 to the third power is 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. And actually, now we don't need all this space for all those problems. I'm going to make my camera a little bit bigger so you can see me. OK. So 4 to the third is 64. Now 2 to the fourth. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So this is going to be 64 plus 16. Quantity over 4 squared is 4 times 4. That's 16. 74, excuse me, 74. 64 plus 16 is going to be 80. 80 over 16, they're both divisible by 4. So 80 divided by 4 is going to be 20. 16 divided by 4 is going to be 4. Now they're still divisible by 4. This is going to go uh, simplify into 5. If you have any questions, then please let me know. Otherwise, let's continue. So if a times b times c is not equal to 0, then the quantity a b squared c cubed, quantity raised to the fourth power, divided by a cubed b to the fifth c to the seventh, is equivalent to which of the following expressions? So I would deal with that power of a power first. right? This guy is on the outside. It needs to be distributed to each value inside the parentheses. Then I would eliminate. Um, my exponents between the numerators and denominators. Okay, just a little bit of a hint there. I'll give you three minutes.
Okay, so first let's deal with this exponent on the outside because this four is outside the parentheses, so it's the whole quantity raised to the fourth power. So that needs to be distributed within the parentheses. So this is going to equal a to the fourth, because at first that's a to the first power, right? When it doesn't have an exponent. So that's going to turn into a to the one times four power, which is a to the fourth. b squared is going to turn into b to the two times four power, which is b to the eighth. c cubed is going to be c to the three times four power, which is going to be c to the twelfth. That's quantity divided by a cubed, b to the fifth, and c to the seventh. So now these are equal to a to the four minus three power, b to the eight minus five power, because we're dividing, c to the twelve minus seven power. So this is exactly equivalent to a to the first power, b to the third power, c to the fifth power. And that's answer selection b. If you have any questions, then please let me know. Otherwise, let's take a look at this guy. So which of the following is equivalent to the quantity 81 cubed times the quantity 27 to the fourth power, quantity divided by 9 to the fifth power, whole quantity raised to the second power. So just make sure that that squared goes to everything before you do, you touch anything in the numerator or denominator. Okay, I'll give you three minutes and then we'll review.
Okay, so for this guy, we ultimately need to rewrite everything in, a t in terms of a base of 3, as is indicated by the answer selections. They all have bases of 3. Um, but we also have this power on the outside of these brackets, so we need to deal with that. That needs to go to everything, all three of these values, the two numerators and the one denominator. So this is going to be the same thing as 81 to the 3 times 2 power times 27 to the 4 times 2 power over 9 to the 5 times 2 power. So that's equivalent to 81 to the 6th times 27th to the 8th, 27 to the 8th, quantity divided by 9 to the 10th. And now recognize that 3 to the 1st power is 3, 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27, 3 to the 4th power is 81. So we can substitute out for all of these bases. Instead of 81, I'm going to write 3 to the 4th. But that's still quantity raised to the 6th power. And that's going to be times. Instead of 27, I'm going to write 3 cubed. Rewrite that. 3 cubed, and then that's still quantity raised to the 8th power. Instead of 9, I can write 3 squared and that's still quantity raised to the tenth power. So 4 times 6 is 24, so we're going to have 3 to the 24th power times 3 times 8 is also 24, so 3 to the 24th power. Quantity divided by 2 times 10, which is going to be 3 to the 20th power. Oops, sorry can see that. Um, and then we can add in the numerator, so that's equal to 3 to the 24 plus 24 power over 3 to the 20th power, and that will be the same thing as 3 to the 48th power over 3 to the 20th power, and now we can subtract because we have common bases raised to exponents and we're dividing, so this is the same thing as 3 to the 48 minus 20th power so your answer here is going to be 3 to the 28th power. And that's answer selection D. Let me decrease my camera here just to make sure you can get all of those notes. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. It's kind of a little bit of a windy solution. We kind of went over here, down here. So if you follow my path here, I'm sorry. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. If not, let's take a look at this guy. I'm going to give you four minutes for this guy. This one's a little bit involved.
Okay, so let's look at the sky. So we have this exponent of one half that needs to be applied to all the values in the numerator, and we have this exponent of two that needs to be applied to all the values in the denominator. So applying that, we're going to get 18 to the one half times 16, b to the 18 times one half, c to the 12 times 1 half all over a to the 2 times 2 power, b to the 5 times 2 power, and c to the 3 times 2 power. I'm just, I'm just uh, distributing that power over power that's outside the parentheses to all the values inside the parentheses. Now that is going to be equivalent to a to 1 half times 16 is 8, 1 half times 18 is 9, 1 half times 12 is 6, so a to the 8th, b to the 9th, c to the 6th. Quantity divided by a to the 2 times 2 is a to the 4th. b to the 5 times 2 is going to be b to the 10th. And c to the 3 times 2 is c to the 6th. So you might notice that the c's cancel out directly. And you're going to be left with uh, a to the 8th, b to the 9th, a to the 4th, b to the 10th. So that's the same thing as a to the 8 minus 4 power times b to the uh, 9 minus 10 power. 8 minus 4 is 4. 9 minus 10 is negative 1. So your answer here should be a to the fourth, b to the negative one power, which is answer selection D. I want you to recognize, though, that this is exactly equivalent. This could be represented as a to the fourth divided by b, which is the same thing as a to the fourth divided by b to the first. All of those are equivalent expressions. So you have to be able to recognize that because they can represent them any way that they want, they being the test makers. Okay, if you have any questions, please, please, please let me know. Otherwise, let's take a look at this guy. Three minutes. Uh, actually, I'm going to give you four minutes.
Okay, so let's look at this problem. Which of the following is equivalent to the quantity 25 cubed, quantity squared, times 125 cubed, quantity raised to the fourth po power, whole quantity raised to the second power, whole quantity divided by 625 cubed quantity squared? Okay, a lot of quantities here, right? So. First of all, look at your answer selections. You can use them as a guide. We have a base of five, so that's a clue that we're gonna wanna uh, replace these values with bases of five. Notice that five to the first power is five. Five squared is 25. Five cubed is 125. Five to the fourth power is 625. So I'm going to replace 25 with 5 squared. So I'm going to say, tw uh, excuse me, 5 squared instead of 25. But then that's still cubed, and then that's still raised to the second power. Now instead of 125, I'm going to write 5 cubed. But then that's still cubed itself, and then that is still raised to the fourth power and the whole thing is still squared. In the denominator, I'm going to replace 625 with 5 to the fourth power, but then that's still cubed, and then the whole thing is still squared. So we have multiple powers of powers here. I'm going to continue this down here. So in the numerator, 5 to the 2 times 3 times 2 power is going to simplify into 5 to the 12th power. 5 to the 3 times 3 times 4 power. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 4 is 36. So we're going to have 5 to the 36th power. This whole quantity is still squared, though. Don't forget that squared on the outside. That applies to both the values. Over 5 to the 4 times 3 times 2 power. That's going to be 5 to the 24th power. In the numerator, we have common bases raised to exponents, and we are multiplying, so we can add these um, exponents together. This is the same thing as 5 to the 12 plus 36 power, so this is 5 to the 48th power. Quantity squared divided by 5 to the 24th power. 48 times 2 is going to be 96, so that's 5 to the 96th power divided by 5 to the 24th power. So that's the same thing as 5 to the 96 minus 24. That's going to be 5 to the 72nd power. And that's answer selection A. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see that. Let me resize my camera here. Okay, so your answer there should have been 5 to the 72nd power. Answer selection A. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, let's look at this last problem. This will take us up to the end of class today. I'm going to give you three minutes.
Okay, so let's look at this guy. So remember, when they say what is W in terms of X, Y, and Z, that's just a really fancy way of saying get W by itself. By itself. Isolate for W what's on the other side of the equal sign that's with, um, that contains the variables X, Y, and Z is your answer. So it just means isolate for W. We don't have common bases, but they all are exponentiations of 5. Notice that 5 to the first power is 5. 5 squared is 25. 5 cubed is 125. And yeah, that's all we have. So we can replace values here or substitute values in. So this is going to be the same thing. Instead of 25, I'm going to write 5 squared. And then that's raised to the x power divided by 5 to the y power. We don't have to change that. We already have a base of 5. That's equal to 125. Instead of 125, I'm going to write 5 cubed raised to the z power. And instead of 20, uh, 25, I'm going to write 5 squared raised to the w power. So this is going to simplify into 5 to the 2x power over 5 to the y power is equal to 5 to the 3z power times 5 to the 2w power. Now on the left hand side I have common bases raised to exponents and I'm dividing the values so I can keep the bases subtract the exponents, so this is going to be 5 raised to the 2x minus y power. And I can set that equal to the right side where I have common bases raised to exponents and I'm multiplying. So I can keep the base and add the exponents, 3z plus 2w. Now I have common bases on opposite sides of the equal sign, so I can drop the bases and equate the exponents. So I can say that 2x minus y is equal to 3z plus 2w. And I'm isolating for y. They want y in terms of x. I'm sorry, I'm isolating for w because uh, they want w in terms of x, y, and z. So I'm going to subtract away 3z. So 2x minus y minus 3z is equal to 2w, and I don't want 2w, I want w, so I'm going to divide by 2, and w is going to be equal to 2x minus y minus 3z, quantity divided by 2. Recognize, though, that this is the same exact thing. They could have written this as x minus 1 half y minus 3 halves z, and that is exactly the same thing as x minus y over 2 minus 3z over 2. All of those are exactly the same, or they're exactly equivalent to each other. So just be able to recognize equivalent values, and they're all equal to w. So any one of those answers would be rated as correct. Okay, if you have any questions, then please let me know. Otherwise, I want to thank you very much for watching my live stream. Um, all of these streams, the links will be available on my, uh, excuse me, on my Facebook channel until I get the 100 subscribers and get my own um, YouTube link. Um, look out for the guided lecture, independent practice problems, and learning partner activity videos that I'll be posting uh, soon. Those will be pre-recorded videos, both covering all of this week's topics and next week's. Um, so you have a lot more opportunities, uh, many more pro uh, practice sets to practice, uh, excuse me, to work with, that's redundant, to work with rules of exponents, as well as next week's topic, which is solving conceptually and solving using substitution. I'm also available on all of my social media that I'll link below in the description. If you have any comments, any questions, any um, trouble working on things in school, feel free to drop me a line on my social media and I'll always try and do my best to help however I can. Um, but otherwise, if uh, I'll have my broadcast for pre-algebra through Algebra 2 starting at 5 o'clock, 5, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock respectively. So if you want to sign in for those, those are covering all of the topics that, will, uh, that are relevant um, or covering all topics relevant to the SAT as well, just 
at a more curriculum level um, or a curriculum approach. Um, it's not so much critical thinking skills as the SAT is testing, but comprehension-based questions. Um, but they're all useful, if, especially if you identify a specific area that you need um, some improvement in. Okay, but if, uh, if I don't see you in any of those live sessions, then I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much for signing in uh, and watching this stream or watching this recording. Uh, and I'll talk to you all um, either in the next stream or on Monday. Have a great weekend.